lefty Shane McClanahan as he sets, and the first pitch to Cedric Mullins is a fastball. Fastball velocities among all starters, but Melanie, you and I were talking before the game. Changeup might be the best pitch. Best pitch. Works best for him. He's got Cedric Mullins in an 0-2 count as he sends one in the dirt. One in the dirt. McClanahan looks like an absolute flamethrower compared to some of the other soft hurlers for the Rays. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I mean, the next high for them so early on in in his career because of that glass now injury was just fast. 2-2. Mullins finds the gap up the right side. That's a leadoff base hit. Cedric Mullins had the. I mean, people say that this is such an all-or-nothing game these days. And in certain ways it is, but we're also saying it, it's something I really love about this sport. Well, McClanahan facing Austin Hayes. Austin Hayes, who reaches out a fast center field, that gold glove that never really ceases to impress. Randy Rosarena, Brandon Rosarena, Brandon Lau at the corners. Austin Hayes with a big drive, but right at the track. Randy Rosarena has it. He'll chase Mullins back to first. Average, which is StatCast uh, defense metric in outs above average from outfielders. They have 20 consistent offensively. And if you look after May, we talked about how May was really good for them. For them. They're 17 who win. Kirby this year out in Denver. Beats cancer. 0-2 from McClanahan. And McClanahan and Mancini gets just a piece of it to stay alive. Let's go ahead and take a look at those total runs odds presented by Challenge. Teams, right? Uh, I'm not sure. Mancini and McClanahan comes out somebody that comes through regardless of if he was on the field or not. They're happy to have him. Pitch home and he'll fight off their day's ball game. They had a two run first inning. First inning. And he gets Mancini to chase it. 49 on the season, 51 RBI. He did move up into Orioles rankings fastest to 50. Mullins, Mullins takes off on the pitch and they tag him out. Sometimes this isn't the last. We're starting it and this is where we go from here. And Alana, for you. I think the biggest thing. I just think the biggest thing, Melanie, is that we were the five that were lucky enough to be chosen to do this broadcast. But and there's so many accomplished women that have the resumes that could absolutely do this broadcast. Very happy. And this is something that we've all absolutely loved getting to pursue in our careers and recognizing that that hasn't always that hasn't always race or creed or religion or you know sexual orientation. If we can show them that it is possible, then we've done our then we've done our very different arm in usually after him. As McClanahan delivers to Anthony Santander, swinging, first swinging, first pitch drive out to right field. Brandon Lau back, he leaps, he's not going to come up with this one. Santander rounds first, he's heading in for second, and the Orioles with a W in every sense of it right there. Up is Ramon Urias, and a fastball. Shane McClanahan, you know the teams get the reads, they get the books, but it's still different to adjust on that day-to-day. -day. Absolutely. Absolutely, and I think Tyler Glass now out, obviously, but that's a huge, that's a huge difference. And from day to day, preparing for that, just not easy. Urias rolls one on the ground, toss across to G-Man Scherzer for the established national starters, where you've got Strasburg and Scherzer. They're going to tell you what to throw. A month now, that really changed the character of exactly who was in this Orioles rotation. Breaking, breaking ball that got out a ground ball yesterday. Severino smacks the ball, line drive into left field, base hit, Santander scores easily. Orioles answer, they've cut the lead 2-1 to one in the second. And you see that no days off chain around his neck. Pat Valeka in, and a fastball comes low, Valeka doesn't take. Long ago, he's dedicated the season to him. And a guy who has been an absolute utility man. But I think this is interesting, I mean, you know, with McClanahan, and there definitely is that element as I was to this game, and this is just that type of adversity, the adversity that really defines who you're going to be. I know he's only allowed over last year at the alternate side. It was like playing in an all-star game every day against Rays batters, and that really batters, and that really helped him get ready for this postseason. It only happened three times before last year, but last year, but with no minor leagues, it was a different kind of setup. But really interesting to just think about that mindset. It is. He's in more often than not with cash. First pitch to Kelvin Gutierrez, and it's a strike. This is the only batter in the Orioles lineup who has any prior time seeing Shane McClanahan, a part of the Orioles organization over from Kansas City. That's fascinating. 899, it's not easy to uh, take a lot back from that. So let's see. 
on a pit on a pitch cut 14 plate appearances we'll take it so pretty good average he takes after an off speed and said that there's still no definitive time it looks like the end of the month to get him throwing off of the mound the good thing is he doesn't have any he does appreciate the honesty that tyler told him when he was suffering the uh, issue in the outing against the transparent Two and McClanahan outside at 99. Mullins has even the count. Bases loaded. To the thing instead getting to go to the all -star. Oh, he absolutely did. He stays alive, fouling off the offer a switch hitter. So those are all numbers from the right side prior. Two two. He gets Mullins to talk about those moments. I love this. Well, it's the hitting coach now at the plate, Austin Hayes. Austin Hayes got out of a bases loaded jam. Bases loaded jam. Hey, slow down when you walk up to the plate. Slow down the game for yourself. Hager, he ripped through gloves so often. He loved so often. He told his mom, stop spending your money. And he learned how to bat without them as a fastball. Mention with the 11. One, two from McClanahan. And Hayes rips up his rips a break. One, two. Hayes gets a hold of it, but it's a hold of it, but it's a sharp bounce to Choi. He can't regain. He throws to McLennan. Several with some pretty good feet underneath him. 28.3 feet, feet per second. I'm tired already. <laughs> 27 is Major League average, so everybody knows what we're dealing with. 30 is the really elite, but I will. Photo. He just, he really loves being a part of this club. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm thinking, and that's why it's been so fun to see them in postseason situations lately. One one, one one, Mancini finds the gap. He drills this one into right field. Base hit. Hayes holds up at second. And the Orioles finding. Mountcastle took home June honors in his rookie category. And it was 20. And at that point, the book had come out. He had to figure out how to get the book back. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny because we had Adolis Garcia on our poll question earlier, and he had an amazing May. And then Ryan Mountcastle had at the end of the season. He's got an 0-2. McClanahan comes home, and he rings it. Santander doubled to get things started for the Orioles in the second, but now, hit, but now he free swings. Breaking ball from McClanahan, 0-1. Santander this year he twisted his ankle pretty badly and he really lost a lot of his rhythm even after he had been reactivated he talked on Masson last year about his defense specifically a couple of <laughs> couple of plays yeah, and that 57th pitch and it falls and it falls outside county against the Toronto Buffalo Club 2-2, Santander swings, but it's a roll right to Taylor Walls to second and first. 6-4-3. We're going to be keeping an eye on that discussion throughout the broadcast because it has certainly been an interesting one. By the way, the Rays and... Ramon Urias, his second time seeing McClanahan for joining us and uh, giving our voices a rest for a minute. Urias. Urias. He kept going with his point afterwards. He, he didn't lose track for even a minute as a, a minute as a 418 foot home run. Being, being a jovial guy on the four days that he's not pitching, he's a completely different beast when he start when he start is on the team charter getting on the airline pilots PA system and making everyone on the charter laugh the charter laugh. Urias and a ball that skips off of Bruhan's glove. Kevin Kiermeyer comes in with the pickup. Comes in. The one run belongs to him. He tries to hold and does not successfully on a breaking ball offering from McClanahan 0 and 1. Seven pitches against Urias. He's at 66, 67, takes a bounce, and again gets underneath Mejia. Orias up to seven. Was removed with injury yesterday, but could be something. <laughs> Severino, Orioles are definitely taking advantage. The 
imagine when you think about it, because you saw the, the hard throwers like Kopech who came up and as a starter, and, and Clanahan grew up in Baltimore until the age of five. As he comes home to Severino, Severino, and he said, oh, at the end of the day, this is my job now. He's got a full count, and he rings up, Sever rings up, Severino. Everybody up right now, not only with his plays, but as we've mentioned throughout the game with that electricity, he, you're starting to see it. Make sure you get those votes in. It's to, it's to Valeka. Oh, yeah, I had a lot to do with it, too. I pitched incredibly well. I swung the bat incredibly well. And my defense had year in and year out as depth, not only in their pitching, see, in their pitching staff, but also in their outfield as well. And it's an interesting prospect when you think about the fact that it is so difficult to repeat as World Series champions. And for the first time, I kind of wonder how that pitch goes in between the bullpen and the starting rotation. Tony Gonsolin is still making his way in the big leagues. So really, you have two quality arms in Walker Bueller and Julio Urias for the Los the IL. Cody Bellinger still hasn't gotten things going offensively, so it is so difficult to repeat. It'll be interesting what the Dodgers do in terms of moves at the deadline. Now, were you as surprised by pretty much everybody for Gabe Kapler and Farhan Zaidi, who came from the Los Angeles Dodgers, who's now the president of their baseball third base? So San Francisco's played, it was played incredibly well. It'll be interesting to see how it shapes up in that division. I that's just it's spot on a lot of it really is but spot on here Kelvin who getting some words there is he had a pretty impossible hop to chase after but his team is up five to one on the Orioles as leadoff man Cedric Mullins takes another appearance against Shane McClanahan here to start the fifth so not a lot of commentary from Lau in the field but immediately 2-0 it's another miss to another miss to Cedric Mullins with stuff like guys being mic'd up. up. Pitch home and McLennan and Andrew Kittredge warming up, warming up for the Rays. As Mullins packed tight in L it is this year. Payoff pitch, Mullins swings, Mullins swings. It's a bouncing ball over to Vidal Brujan, the second baseman, tosses to G-Man Choi. Meanwhile, we have had a lot of people commenting tonight throughout the game about Shohei Otani as off. Awesome. It's that overall just likable personality. I mean, he got checked for six sticky substances and afterwards, afterwards. I mean, the fact that we see that on a broadcast. And Austin Hayes, Austin Hayes conversation with Kevin Cash we all did about the fact that he burst onto the scene as one of the top prospects in baseball had a baseball had a Cooper Kevin Cash was at the all-star game obviously as a representative of the American League and he had a conversation with Vladimir Gershon with Vladimir Gershon put on yourself I had a conversation with Wander earlier today in Spanish and he said you know what the biggest thing is just no thing is just no it is that you can really give a conversation to him in his native language Pitch home to pitch home to Trey Mancini. He sends it to right, but Brandon Lau 